The last thing to do in this game is to have a way of checking if we've killed all of the enemies in this wave and then move on to the next one. For this I'm going to create a helper function. So inside of our main scene here and our main script I'll create a new function called is wave completed. And this will begin with a variable called all underscore dead. This will be a boolean that is set to true by default. I then need to get an array that contains all of my enemies that are in this wave. Well, remember when I create an enemy, they get added into our group. So I can just take them from that group. I'll create a new variable called enemies, and this will be equal to get underscore tree, then get nodes in group, and the group that I want is my enemies group. So by the end of that, I will have one array inside of this variable here that has every single enemy for this wave. But because the enemies are spawned periodically on a timer, I actually need to wait until all of them have spawned before I can check if the wave is complete. So I'll add a comment to say, check if all enemies have spawned first. And to do that, I just look at the size of this array. I'll say if enemies dot size is equal to max underscore enemies, which is essentially the number of enemies that I'm allowed to have on this wave. So if we go back up to the top inside of our new game function, we say that we're allowed to have 10 enemies on this wave. Well, then I just take the enemies array, which has all of the ones that have spawned, and check, is it equal to 10? Because if it isn't, that means that we haven't spawned them all yet. But if it is, then we can start checking if they're all dead yet. And we just iterate through each one. I say for E in enemies, check whether that enemy is alive. And if we go into our goblin scene again, or rather just the goblin script, I should be able to open it here, I still have it. I did have a variable inside of it called alive, and it was a boolean. Now this variable is set to true when we first start and this enemy is first spawned, but when they die inside of this die function, the alive variable gets set to false. So I can use this variable, I can check whether that variable is set to true or false inside of our main script. Since I'm iterating through each of the enemies anyway, I can say if e alive, basically if that variable is true, well that means that this variable up here, which is saying that they're all dead, that can't be true anymore. I started off with the assumption that it's true, that all of them are dead, but if I find one that is alive, then it can't be true. So all dead is false. And then once this for loop is finished and we've checked all of the enemies, we can return from this function this all dead variable. So this all dead variable basically is going to be either true or false. But I have another condition here, which is my first if statement. So if the enemies array is equal to the number of enemies, then we do this check. But if it isn't, I still need to be able to return a value. So we'll say else return false. Because they haven't fully spawned yet. I haven't spawned all of the enemies. So how can the wave be over? It can't. So that means that this check is going to be false. I can now use this helper function inside of my process function. So all this time we've left this empty, it's just had a pass in it. We can remove that and now say if is wave completed. And we're not interested in the false value. We're only interested in what happens if the wave is completed and it returns a true. Well, the first thing we do is we move on to the next wave. So wave is now plus one. The second thing we want to do is adjust the difficulty. We don't really have a mechanism for this yet, so we'll come back to this. But after that, we want to pause the game. So we'll say get underscore tree dot paused is equal to true. We're going to treat this in the same way as if the player has been killed. Remember, we paused the game there and we use the timer to restart. We'll do the same to give us a little break in between waves. And to give us this break, we need an additional timer. So we go up here, add a timer node and I'll rename this one to be my wave over timer. And I'll move it up next to my restart timer. In fact, I'll just put it right above it. And this timer is going to be exactly the same as the restart timer. So both of these are set to one second, one shot, and importantly, they're only active when the game is paused. So I'll do the same here, set it to one shot, and then set the process mode to be when paused. Now, when I have my wave over complete, being true, I'll pause the game, 
and then I will start my wave over timer. So we'll just say dot start at the end here. And just like we did with the restart timer, we can link this timeout node, or rather this timeout signal into our main script. Now to keep things tidy and all together, I'm actually gonna move this one up here. So I've got my restart timer just above it. I'll have my wave over timer. And even though I move the code like that, I know that this function is still connected to the signal because I have this little icon here. And now what I want to do is reset everything again. So similar to what I did with my new game function, I basically want to clear everything that was there. I now have a new wave because I moved on to the next one and I just want to start the wave over again. But the problem is I can't call the new game function because it resets everything. It says the wave back to one, resets my lives, number of enemies. So I only want part of this, which means that I need another function. And that's going to be our reset function. So underneath new game, we'll create a function called reset. And then we will take almost everything from our new game function. We want to leave the wave, leave the lives and max enemies, but everything else comes out of there and goes into our reset function. And now to make sure this code is still called when we first start the game, we need to call the reset function from the new game function. Now this gives us a way of restarting just the wave without actually restarting the entire game. So our lives and the number of the current wave that we're on isn't going to change. We can just reset everything again, but continue the game at a new wave. So we call this reset function in here when our timer expires. So let's test this out. We'll reduce the number of enemies to just one. And then let's see what happens. So there's one enemy in here. I kill this enemy and now we go again. And now we're on to wave two. We haven't made the game any more difficult. So we still just have one enemy. We're progressing from wave to wave and everything is getting reset in between. And there's another thing that we need to set up though. So let's put our lives back up to two. And this time I'm not gonna get a game over because I should still be able to continue, but nothing actually happens here. So I have been hit, I've lost a life, but the game continues until I get hit again and we get a game over. So we need something in between those two scenarios. We need a way of just resetting everything, but with one less life. And we can check for that already. So down here, we've got this function that checks whether the goblins have come in contact with the player. We subtract one from the player's life. Well, what we want to do at this point is, first of all, we move this paused function. So we move that script up here. Previously, we were only pausing the game when we were completely getting the game over. But now we're gonna pause the game whenever the player dies, regardless of whether he still has lives or not. So that will pause the game. But then we say, have we completely run out of lives? If yes, then we give a game over screen. But if not, so we'll do an else statement, then we want to treat it as the wave is over. So, okay, I haven't killed all of the enemies, but this particular wave is finished because the players just died. So we start our wave over timer. And that kind of links into all the code we've already done, because when the wave over timer expires down here, we just reset everything. The number of wave doesn't change, number of lives doesn't change. Our reset function simply just puts everything back to how it should be with all the variables still as they were. So let's test this one out now. I've got two lives, and if I get attacked by this enemy, everything gets paused and we get reset back to where we were, but now I'm down to one life. The second time we get a game over, and now I restart with two lives again. And now we're actually nearly finished, but there was one thing that I skipped over earlier, which is adjusting the difficulty. So we need a mechanism of making this game more difficult with each wave. Now, one way would be to just increase the number of enemies. So let's do that first. Our enemies are controlled by this variable, max enemies, and we want this to increase each wave. So we'll create some more variables at the top. Now, after the wave variable, I'll create another one, which will be my difficulty. And I will define that as a float. I will then create another one underneath, which will be a constant. And this will be my diff underscore multiplier. So this is a difficulty multiplier. This is also going to be a float and it will be 1.2. So the higher you set this number above one, the more quickly the game will become difficult. 
Now we need to define our difficulty variable because we don't have a value assigned to it. And we will do that inside of our new game function. So let's just reset some of these variables. We've got wave one, that's correct. That's how we should be starting. Let's put lives to three. And then I'm actually gonna swap these around just in order of importance, if you like. So three lives, wave one. And then instead of max enemies, I will say difficulty is equal to 10.0. My max enemies variable isn't actually going to be defined in here. Instead, I'm going to put it into my reset function. And the reason for that is that every time we complete a wave, the game is going to get more difficult. This reset function is run whenever we complete a wave. So it makes sense to update the number of max enemies in here. We'll say max enemies is equal to the integer value of our difficulty. So the higher this difficulty number becomes, the more enemies we're going to spawn. Now we just need to increase the difficulty. So we go back into here where I had this comment previously. And underneath that, I will say my difficulty variable multiplied equals by the difficulty multiplier. So now each wave is going to get slightly more difficult because there's going to be slightly more enemies. So we start off with 10. Uh, this might actually take me a few seconds to complete now. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the last one, 10. And now we get 12 because we multiplied it by 20%. So each wave is going to get 20% more difficult than the one before it. But when I played this, I found that it wasn't enough because even though you had more enemies, they were still spawning at the same rate. So as long as you didn't miss too many of them, you were able to just keep killing them as they spawned. So the second way of making it more difficult is actually going to make them spawn faster, which is controlled by our enemy spawner. Now, if we open up our enemy spawner scene again, we have a timer at the bottom and this timer is set to one second. So every second, a new enemy is generated. What we will do is adjust that timer based on the difficulty. So inside of our new game, whenever we start the game or restart the game, we want to go into our enemy spawner and then access the timer and set its wait time property to one second. And let's just copy this so we don't have to keep typing it. And now when we have our adjust difficulty section, yes, we increase the difficulty itself. So we have more enemies, but at the same time, we go into our timer and we reduce our wait time. So we say minus equals by just a tiny amount. So 0 0.05 of a second. That won't be noticeable between one wave to the other, but over time it will become more and more difficult because they're just going to spawn quicker and quicker. But we don't want this to carry on forever because then eventually it's going to get down to zero and the enemies are just all going to spawn. So to avoid that, we want to set a minimum floor for this. So we'll say if enemy spawner forward slash timer dot wait time is greater than 0.25 seconds, then we can do this. But when we get down to 0.25 seconds, the enemies are going to be coming out so quickly that we don't want to make it any more difficult. And that's pretty much it. The game is now finished. You can expand on it as much as you like by adding more items, more enemies and so on. But the game mechanics are now there. So I hope you found this one useful and interesting. And if you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.